Okay, so as we continue building up more refined paint, sometimes your brushes get kind of overdone and overly repetitive. So remember, you can use your brush, your eraser brush, and knock things back. That's why we've layered the refined paint on top of other layers. So I'm erasing at a low opacity with my custom. I don't know if I am actually using my custom brush. I, I can. Yeah, there we go. And especially if, like me, you're just using a trackpad, you, you don't get to control the, the thickness of your brush just with the pressure. So by going with the eraser and kind of cutting it back in different ways, when you've built up a lot of layering, this was done with the, the color dynamics on the brush setting. But then I can just take it back a little bit with the eraser before painting back on top of it. Because ultimately, when you zoom in to kind of its, its print quality, you want to see what your brush strokes look like. And you want them to have some sort of cohesiveness. Even though it is going to look kind of, especially if you're just using a trackpad, splotchy and sponge painty this way, almost like a pointillist, when you get some distance on it, it comes together. And so it just takes more and more time to build up that, that resolution and that detail with smaller and smaller brushes, if that's what you want to do. All right, so at this point, let me work on some of the, the areas that are not so worked on. The top of the nose. I tend to think in terms of shadows or light. So I'm going to work in shadow mode for a while, just like I was digitally coloring with a duotone and putting in the, the darks. And I'll address and kind of squint a lot, address the shadows, not just in one area, but everywhere. And I definitely need to work more on the neck and the jaw. And don't be scared of making kind of big marks and then scrubbing them back with these low opacity brushes. That's what makes the digital painting more accurate, you know, more engaging, more considered overall by you. I get a little bit more of this blue into some of these shadows. I like that. So no matter how much reference you have, there's going to be kind of blind spots. So in both of my references, it's a little bit hard to see what the shape of the lower jaw is. So I have to sometimes make some decisions as the painter, decide where the highlight's going to be, where the edge is going to be. Again, it's OK to overstate and then work it back. Sometimes you just have to, even though this is digital painting, sometimes you just have to outline an area, kind of give yourself parameters. So where am I going to end this portrait? That gives me a shadow to react to, build up on top of. So far I'm pretty impressed by Photo P in that it's not lagging that much, even though this brush is moving a lot slower than it would if I was using Photoshop installed on my computer. 
And I know from trying it early in the semester that though I can support a tablet in PhotoP, that does make at, at high resolutions like this, we're at 350 by 11 by 14 inches. Um, that is a little too much for for the program, the browser-based program. Maybe with a, a newer computer, that would be a little easier. But that just slowed it down to a crawl, and that wasn't going to work. So that's why I'm, even though I have a tablet, there's lots of reasons I'm not using a tablet to show you this, but if you notice that the tablet is causing everything to slow down, realize that you can do a lot of the the grunt work of the painting without it. And then maybe you just save that for your details. Use that pressure sensitivity where it matters most. So, because I'm treating the whole surface of the portrait here, I think that's pretty effective. Now I want to start thinking, well, this is a lot of work. And maybe it's a little too much work for just reproducing something that there's a photo of, right? So is there something original I can add to this? This is the concept side of the art. Is there an idea of my own that I can add to this? Because if I have control of every pixel, why do I have to be a slave to what the reference is? So I could give Godzilla a mustache if I had a reason to. Or I could make his tongue sticking out. Or I could give him tattoo work. I'm thinking just with the shape of this kind of Godzilla face, this reptilian face, it might be fun to give him like big horn rimmed glasses and make it like Geekzilla. And I have the ability to do that because I'm creating all my own pixels, right? So one way that I talked about when I first introduced this of digital painting is called rotoscoping, and that's working on top of something. So what I could do, I'll just save my work quickly, is bring in that compositing knowledge just for fun, just to give me a little bit more of a reason to do this painting. And then open up a new tab, do a Google image search, or horned rimmed glasses. And then of course, this is good review, making sure that they're as large as possible, even though I'm gonna be painting over them. Rotoscoping usually leaves the original image in a little bit. That's kind of an underpainting. And I want kind of the, the dorkiest looking ones at the right angle. Problem is, horn rim glasses are so fashionable now. They all look good. All right, so this is a nice big reference. I'm going to open the image in a new tab so I can make sure it's not just a bad like upscaling. Nope, that's got some clean, clean resolution. So I'm going to save that. Drag it into my assignment folder.
And maybe this is just to give me a little break from just the repetitive digital painting endlessly, but then I can drag that on into my photo P. It's kind of helpful that it's underneath the layer already. And I can use Control T, flip it horizontally. Almost the right size already. Enlarge it a little bit, tilt it a little bit. Move it up above my refined paint layer. And now let's get rid of the white. So how do I do that? Remember, we're trying to just play with direct pixels, so that's much better than setting it on multiply. Because now multiply, unfortunately, would just darken all of the pixels underneath it. So I want to really control it. So I want to keep it on normal mode, but delete the whites away. So I'm going to use my magic wand. Turn off contiguous, select all the whites. I have to rasterize it first in order to delete from it and then delete. And because it gives me this little haze, right, then I'm going to go to refine edge on my selection. All these old compositing skills. That looks good. I want to say OK. Nope, that did not do what I wanted it to do. <laughs> Go back and delete away. So just the three pixel feather is enough to get rid of most of that. That little white haze. There's little things I'll delete away. Now this is a composited element. Digital painting is not compositing, it's painting. So how do we turn this into painting? Well, we paint over the top of it. And when you paint over the top of a photographic element, that's called rotoscoping. And I feel like that's OK here in a way that it's not OK for the Godzilla head overall. Because here, this is just an accessory. And I want it to look like the glasses. Right. Ah. So I'm doing kind of a sloppy job. But now that gives me something that I can paint over. So I'm not even going to change layers. I'm just going to paint directly on top of these glasses. I might use some of my own palette. So where are the darkest shadows? Well, let's paint that over. Get some of the color into there. The different variations. Some of the highlights. Every once in a while, I might have to erase. 